Our opening hymn is 376, please stand. Be to God. This morning, Richard is taking the day off, and he will be taking the day off next Sunday as well. He deserves a good long rest, if you ask me. So let's pray for him and for us. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God, kingdom, now and forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Keep, O Lord, your household, the church, in your steadfast faith and love that through your grace we may proclaim your truth with boldness and minister your justice with compassion for the sake of our Savior Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The lesson, t- lesson today is 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 6 through 10 and 14 through 17. We are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or or evil. For the love of Christ urges us on because we are convinced that our one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all so that those who live might live no longer for themselves but for him who died 
and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view. We know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. The word of the Lord. Let us do our psalm alternately with the women taking the odd-numbered verses and the men taking the even-numbered verses. It is a good thing to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, Most High. To tell of your loving kindness early in the morning and of your faithfulness in the night season. On the sultry and on the lyre and the duality of the you have made me glad by your acts, O Lord, and I shout for joy because of the works of your hands. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree, and shall spread abroad like the cedar of Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall bear their fruit in old age, they shall be green and sapphire. That they may show how upright Lord is my rock in whom there is no fault. Please stand for him 302. This is the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He did not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds of the earth. Yet, when it is sown, it grows up, and is the greatest of all shrubs, and puts forth large branches, 
so that the birds of the air may make nests and rest in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, spring has sprung, so all this talk of seeds works. <laughs> it sounds like what you and me, what you and I, were doing in the springtime, scattering seeds. It's a very ordinary miracle, but it is a miracle, like all of life. I want to talk about seeds, both kinds of seeds today. I want to talk about the kinds that we plant and the kinds that are planted for us. Now, sometimes the kingdom of God, Jesus said, is like the planting, the scattering of seeds. What does he mean by this? What are we supposed to think? Well, ordinarily, we're not, an, most of us here, an agricultural per people anymore, but we are surrounded by flower gardens and beautiful flowers in Norfolk. Jesus gives us this parable because it is supposed to make us think about the fact that the kingdom of God is not something we are waiting for. It is something we are invited to live in, right here and right now. Now, I want you to notice that when Jesus talks about the kingdom of God, he says that we scatter and we sleep. We rise night and day. Did you notice that little switch from our usual thinking? We usually think day and night. But the typical Hebrew order was meant to emphasize God and God's action and God's work. Whereas in contemporary society, we usually put the emphasis on us and on our work. The parable is talking about what it's like in Jesus' day, where there is no electricity, where if you are going to work and be able to see, you are going to be working during the day. Of course, there were exceptions to this, even in Jesus' time, those who kept watch over the um, walls of the city at night, for instance. But the Hebrew rhythm was supposed to emphasize for us that what we do isn't dependent on us alone. What we do is multiplied by the grace of God. We may never know the fruit of all the seeds that we plant, and yet we trust the grace of God. The kingdom of God was Jesus' vision of what it would be like if the whole world lived consciously under God's loving care. Now, we as Christians believe that the whole world does live under God's gracious care. But many people are not conscious of it. The kingdom of God, therefore, is an idea you can step into, that you can live into. During your day, you can make the kingdom of God part of your awareness, and you can bring the kingdom of God to those around you, scattering love wherever you can just like the seeds in this story. There's a lot of talk about God's will. But I want you to notice in the psalm for today that we say, it is a good thing to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to tell of your loving kindness. Now that word, loving kindness, smooshed together and made one compound word is our attempt to translate the Hebrew word hesed. And hesed is God's will. And God's will is God's loving will. 
Never leave that word out. God's loving will. God's will for health. God's will for wholeness. God's will for shalom, for peace, for goodness, for our better angels, if you will. God's will is kind. Kindness with justice. Because there cannot be kindness among all people until there is justice, until there is compassion, until there is love. The kingdom of God is not like human empires or human empire builders. It is not like earthly kings who are proud and powerful and strong enough to do whatever they choose. Taking the will of the people into account or dismissing it. Taking the common good into account or dismissing it. This is what the kings of our world are like. But it is not our king's world. Our king's world is a world of hesed, of God's loving kindness. All of us living in mutuality with one another. No God is a king like our king, a king who shares all that he has, that is the source of all life and all goodness and pours himself out for us, pours his love out for us, even from the cross. This is a king who is one with us, a king who is for us, The king of love my shepherd is, one of my favorite hymns. The kingdom of God is a guiding myth, if you want to think of Richard's sermon from last week. And what Richard meant by that is that it is a vision that guides our lives. And it is meant to guide our lives consciously at all times. Now, I will admit that there are times when I fail at this. And I imagine there are times that you fail at this. We are, however, master gardeners. <laughs> master gardeners for our Lord and Master, our God. And we are supposed to be planting that hesed, that God's love and kindness, everywhere we go, as best we can, even when it means standing in opposition to cruelty or injustice. The times that I have muddied God's kingdom, so to speak, don't you like that metaphor, muddied? It made me think of a bishop of the church. Um, he's the bishop of East, uh, Western Louisiana, and his name is Jake Owensby. Some of you may have seen him on Facebook. He has a blog. One of his recent books was Looking for God in Messy Places. And the subtitle was A Book About Hope. But what his common theme is, is that we are messy people. That lots of times we create messes even when we're trying not to. That we are muddy people. That we are, as one of my friends used to say, made from dirt. We are Adams, Adams, earth creatures. We are mud and we are messy. But God's loving kindness, God's grace can work through our messiness, can work through our muddiness and make this world the kingdom of God among us, shared among us, lived daily by us. Thanks be to God. Standing together as people of God, let us declare the faith of the church in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God, from God, light from light, true God, true God, begotten, not made, of one 
Today we pray especially for these members and friends of our congregation, Mike, Sheila, Jerry, Kevin, John, Sherry, Chuck, Alice, health care workers, all those who are ill, our police, our first responders, victims of violence in our community and beyond. We also pray for the repose of the soul of Wayne Weber, a past member of this congregation. I invite you to add your own personal intercessions at this time. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please be seated. I invite you to pass the peace by saying hello to those around you. Today we bless this water, which is used to remind us of our baptism in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Eucharistic prayer is prayer C, found in your bulletin. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks 
Jesus. And praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile Earth, our island home. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return through prophets and sages. You revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. And therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers, let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
post-communion prayer is on page 13 in your bulletin. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.